Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're joined with a special guest, uh, Kate Kutora from Type Match App. And uh, I want to say about Type Match App first, this is something really amazing. And uh, honestly, I can't believe there is an app or anything like this at the moment already. I I think it's really nice that we're getting a tool that we can use to connect with people based on personality, not just about uh, looks or appearance, but also about how you think and how you feel and what your values are and what you need to be happy. So today we're going to be talking about the 16 personalities in love and we're going to be discussing how different types act when in love. And I'm going to let uh, Kate take the lead on some of these personal types while I can, will probably want to take the lead on some of the others. And first, I want to begin with just a, a quick question to warm up. And uh, okay. uh, first, yes, which personality types do you tend to find more interesting? Oh, more interesting. That is a good question. Uh, INFJs, um, INTPs are very interesting to me. Um, my own type, of course, is interesting to me. Like, yeah, of course. But also, like, types of people, like, people who are involved in my life, of course, this is interesting to me because I, I want to understand, like, I have a motivation to understand this actual person better. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm really drawn to learning more about INFJs and INTPs. And I think that shows in my videos. I think I... I've spent just as much time learning about them as, as my own type. And why are they so interesting to you? Wow. <laughs> uh, past relationships and current relationships. So you're dating an INFJ or not, uh, yay right now, right? Right, right. So, of course, that has been a big motivation to understand more about like how his mind works. Um, and also, it's, it's just I think the a lot of the conceptions about INFJs out there are very incorrect. And that's why he was originally typed as um, an INTP. And then he thought INTJ. And now we finally arrived at like, no, you're actually an INFJ. It's like it never would have occurred to him because he's so different from a lot of the conceptions that people have about INFJs. So that's driven me to learn more about them. What about you? What types are interesting to you? So I've... Uh been the most connected to probably ENFPs and ENTPs in my life. Uh, um, when I look back at uh, old relationships, it's mostly been ENTPs, ENFPs, and the odd INFP. And uh, yeah, I think I've been uh, uh, interested in a lot of different people. I think when I was young, I kind of wanted to understand everything about everyone. Uh, and uh, I was more focused on other people's needs uh, than my own. So I kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, kind of dated without really knowing what I was looking for and more focused on what other people were looking yeah. for or what I thought other people were looking for. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, the question was today, what are the different six of the 16 personalities like when they are in love and when they're crushing for somebody? And I thought maybe it's best we start with the ENTPs and I thought maybe you can take a lead on that because you're an ENTP, right? Okay, well, you know, a lot of what I'm going to say today is going to be anecdotal because we're talking about behaviors and I'm going to be drawing on exp my own experiences with this. So, yeah, what I say is not going to be true for every ENTP or what I say about INTPs won't be true for everyone. Just want to give that warning. I don't consider myself to be like the all knowing MBTI relationship expert. I'm just a person who knows enough to be dangerous and made, and made an app that I hope is useful to people. Um, anyway, okay, with all that, the question was <laughs> ENTPs, or ENTPs like when they're in love? Um, I think that for me and ENTPs in love, um, we, well, like just like the flirting stage, let's go there first. So like the flirting stage is like extremely, like try to go like all in on being charming. OK, so like really going all in on like using the F.E. a lot. I love to compliment. I give so, so many compliments and it's like it's important to me that I I give like a really special and good compliment, not just like, oh, I like your hair, you know, like something that's like really meaningful for the other person and um, that like we can connect over that makes them feel good. It's all about like, how can I make this other person feel good? Um, 
And like, what do we like in love though? I think what ENTPs look for is somebody that they can be 100% truthful with, like somebody who can handle like their hard TI parent truth because there's so much that ENTPs like hold back and don't say because it's like, ah, uh, you're not going to like this. And I say that all the time to my INFJ boyfriend. I'm like, he's like, no, tell me, tell me. And I'm like, oh, you're not going to like it. And he's like, no, I can handle it. And then he can, which is why like, I love, I love his capacity to handle um, that TI. But yeah, somebody that we can be completely open with and that won't think like that, Mm, that's morally questionable or whatever but in love what else are we like I'm just I'm just spitballing here (laughs) (laughs) going out of my way to do things that I would never otherwise do for other people like trying to like actually pay attention to the experience that the other person is having um because usually I just like that's out of my mind totally and I, I do try. I know I'm not the best at it. Don't always succeed, but I, I do give effort to it. Um, and hmm, I don't know. Do you have any input? Like, let me let me try to think some more. So I'm noticing you're going more into your feeling aspects when you talk yeah. about how you are in love. But well, isn't course, it also absolutely. possible to love somebody with uh, the thinking functions? Like, uh, can you find that you are sometimes uh, prone to testing a, a potential person? If you're interested in somebody that you start testing, can they handle this? Can they deal oh, with yeah. this? Will they be able to uh, yeah. handle this kind of thing for me? It's all testing. Um, and But that's how ENTPs are when meeting anybody new, that they think like, oh, like, this could be a thing. It's like... Mm, start with something little, like a little joke, like humor is a great way for ENTPs to test, like, is this going to be a good match for me? Um, Mm. That joke, that joke was a little bit dark. That was, that comment was like slightly inappropriate or whatever. Did you, did you like that? Like, oh, you liked that. Let me see if I can take it a little bit further. And you keep going down the line till you get to the point where it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I can tell you anything. Um, Because, you understand the logic behind it or you like my logic. Um, and that's, that's extremely important. But yeah, that's true. Well, it's that's also, true. I'm a, I'm a lot less harsh um, with him. And when I'm in love, you know, I kind of, I'll, I'll hold back the TI a little bit, um, give more passes. Like, you know, you're just more like, generous in your interpretations mm-hmm. of other people's thoughts I, I guess that's like I'm holding back on like TE critic then yeah because you know you're like oh that didn't really make sense but like let's explore that a little bit instead of just like jumping down the person's throat like that was wrong this is wrong um so yeah it makes sense that when people are in love they uh, all of us put on a bit more rose-colored glasses yeah. in a sense so yeah. we start seeing all the cognitive functions and all the behavioral dynamics in more positive light than we would otherwise. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, it eventually gets to the point where I can tell, tell them like exactly as it is. But um, I always try to feed it back with that, that F.E. Like, oh, that was kind of harsh. Like, but I love you. Because, <laughs> um, like, you know. I'm going to uh, jump a little bit to INFJs, and that's yeah. uh, something I feel uh, I can probably contribute something as an INFJ I myself. I <laughs> INFJs than ENTPs, to be honest. Like, I yeah. think I, because it's like it's outside instead of internal to me. I feel like it's I can see it. Easier better. to be objective. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I want to tell <laughs> you what I think, and tell me if I'm right or not. Curious. <laughs> I, I think that... Um, INFJs don't have like this typical problem that a lot of introverts have like INTPs and INFPs where they're unsure about the relationship and so they're like unsure about um, initiating like INTPs and INFPs will be the last one to initiate a first kiss like you can go on dates with that like so many dates with them and it's like you can feel that like okay yeah. it's building up like come on and they won't do it and you have to just like Finally, like you I've have seen to, that. I guess I'll do it because you're not going to take charge and kiss me and we need to get the ball rolling. But 
I think INFJs are very good at getting the ball rolling with that because they can read your emotions so well. Yeah. You know? I think that's absolutely right. I think it's uh, because uh, we are uh, feeling judging and intuitive judging types. So we tend to uh, take the lead socially uh, and in groups. Uh, we are more likely to introduce ourselves to people that we don't know than other introverts can be. We are also more likely to, uh, in uh, when you're when you like somebody, to get more close to them and to really sit down with them one on one and to really make that time with the other person and to uh, really get to know them and what they think and what they feel. Because as an INFJ, you uh, want to get people. So if you're in love with somebody or you're starting to uh, uh, take an interest in somebody, you become just more interested in getting to know them and how they work and how they feel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I love how um, INFJs are okay with um, initiating when they see that it's, like a person that they are interested in. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really cool because I, I found that my, my INFJ boyfriend, he understands my feelings much better than I do. Um, so he can even read them and like detect them before I even notice that this is like something that I'm feeling. And um, he, he knew about my feelings for him before I knew about them. Even. <laughs> and uh, he, I don't know. Yeah. He, he knew that I liked him even before I knew. And that was, that was amazing. Um, but I think that I'm going to make a video about this, but I'll bring it up now. Like the way that I would describe INFJs in terms of romance is that they are subtle because I think that INFJs don't like, like grand romantic gestures. And they, they, they like to fantasize about sort of the mundane it's like they'll imagine standing with you at the kitchen counter eating cheese and like, and they'll get excited about it. And it's yeah. like, okay, well, I would get excited about eating cheese at any point, but like, anyway, like, you know, they just, they can imagine like the little things in life with you. And if you're excited to like do the little things in life with somebody, then you're going to be like, it's going to be amazing. Like the big things that happen. Um, yeah, I have a theory, a new one, and that is that I think INFJs are generally more visual than they are li literal. And I ask if you're an INFJ watching this, you can always uh, let me know if you agree with this. Uh, but I think it's just that we tend to really imagine ourselves with the other person. And like you say, it's usually just mundane situations like uh, cooking for them or like yeah, spending time together, or just going on a walk or like those really uh, small, uh, you know, everyday things. Uh, but then, of course, we do tend to fill it like with a lot of meaning and a lot of uh, like... Uh, significance in another way as well is it because of like it's real because of the grounding in se i don't know honestly if it's because of that or if it's because of we are intuitive judging types and i think uh, when you're an intuitive judging type it's really easy to run through a scenario in your head and to run through it visually as well and to see how would it develop and how would it happen. And you said sneaky, uh, subtle, you said. And subtle, I've, yeah. heard, I've, I've heard sneaky as well <laughs> uh, because uh, we uh, don't make a lot of noise like an extroverted sensing type would in those situations. So it's in that sense, it's very different because we just subtly maneuver ourselves. So we are in a position where we are next to that person and when we are with them and as if it was natural and as if, uh, yeah, it was just how it was going to be and we prepared for it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like graceful. I Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's also, I think, uh, that we do read off the other person's signs a lot. So I've never had an issue knowing if uh, another person liked me. Uh, I know a lot of people, they can spend a lot of time going over, does he like me? What does he think about me? And so on. But for me, it's uh, I kind of just see it uh, when I talk to the other person that this person must like me and must uh, uh, be uh, interested in me just as I am in them. And yeah. I've always had a good sense for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, NIFE, right? So yeah. maybe that's it. 
uh, we can move quickly to INTPs if you like and uh, wonder what do you think about INTPs and love? Uh, INTPs, okay, well, like I said, they do have this problem of like being unsure of the other person's emotions and uh, they, they are really very cute when they're in love though. Very, very cute because um, I think they, they use their NE a lot to try to relate um, because the FE is so low and then the other functions are introverted. This is just my, my hypothesis about like how it works for them because I know INTPs will do a lot of things like they'll, like they'll try to initiate with you in like little cute ways like sending um, a, a funny meme or like a ridiculous picture of their foot. It's just like things that don't even make any sense, but it's just like whatever they're thinking about. Do I don't even, I don't know. I think um, they're Has goofy. an INTP ever sent a picture of your foot? Okay. Well, <laughs> I know INTPs that do this. So, you know. Um, I just huh. think they're a little bit goofy in love um, because they're they're trying to like get your attention and relate and it's not it's like it's cute in the way that like a little kid is cute when they have a crush and they don't know how to deal with it so they like put bugs in a girl's hair or something you know like and it's not like that extreme but it's just like oh you you um I don't know it's a it's a lot of like irony I think they like to play the coquette sometimes I think they like to play games where it's like I'm not I don't want to explicitly tell you that I like you I don't want to make it too obvious so I'm gonna like give you a little bit then I'm gonna pull it back and then I'm gonna give it to you and pull it back and stuff because I'm unsure about how you feel so there's that little like back and forth game that they do um and I'm like, why can't you just be a little bit more direct? But. Yeah, I think it makes sense that INTPs, they become a little bit fascinated with uh, their partner, as if that partner was like a lab study, you know, in a way. Like, uh, what do they do if I do this? How yeah. do they respond to that? And it can seem very out of place or very like uh, sudden or random, uh, but it's just like uh, used to them draw like a bigger conclusion about you as a person or who you are. I mean, I think ENTPs do this too. It makes a lot of sense. It's like they'll send like something ridiculous, like a song or something that like I really like, but this is totally ridiculous. Let's see, let's see how this goes over. And it's like, oh, you like that? You're cool. Um, but yeah, or I liked how you re you related to that. Um, I liked how I gave like they like banter. Okay, so you throw something at at them, and they like it if you can throw it right back. It's like, oh, this person's smart. I have someone to contend with here, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm using my hands too much. I can put my hands on. Okay. I'll be honest. I find probably INTPs and ISFJs uh, some of the most adorable. I don't know why I have this feeling, but whenever I watch an INTP, I was like, oh, that's adorable. <laughs> and that's the same with ISFJs, honestly. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I don't know. I like, uh, A lot of INTPs don't want to be cute, but they, they really are. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, that, yeah, they, their FB, their extroverted feeling uh, can really make them uh, uh, come off as a bit awkward. But also you really, you know, it's really that you appreciate it. Because when an INTP is using extroverted feeling, you know it's taking a lot of effort to them and that it's going out of their way to do it. And you kind of want to reward it as well. So yeah, you really want absolutely. to compliment them for it. Like, oh, that was really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I can see yeah. that that they they want the, an intelligent partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they'll get bored otherwise. I think with uh, ENFJs, I think ENFJs are also interesting to talk about uh, because they are a little, a little similar to INFJs because I think they are also like very in, uh, visual and very good at building that bond together with another person and really making establishing a connection together and knowing what the other person is feeling and like uh, really having that kind of uh, connection. But I think uh, ENFJs, they... Uh, 
want to match with the other person a lot more than an INFJ does. So I feel like ENFJs, they're a lot better at looking at, do we share similar interests and values? Does this person feel the same way I do about this? Do they care about this cause that I care about? And it's a lot more important to them that they feel that their partner is on the same page or wants the same thing they do. And mm -hmm. it's also, I think, a lot more future-oriented. In some ways, I think ENFJs are more future-oriented than INFJs. Because they're really like trying to match with the other person. Like, do you want the same thing as I do? How many kids do you want? And how big your house? And do you want a dog or a cat? And what kind of car? And, you know, they really go over all these things uh, when they, they're starting to take an interest in somebody. Would you say that ENTJs do a similar thing because of the NI parent that both have? Yeah. I think and I parent this a lot like that. Yeah, you have to want the same things. I, I talked about this in the video I did about like arguing how people argue with their parent function. I said like if people break up and they're like, we just didn't want the same things, so it wasn't going to work. Like that sounds like an and I parent um, that's doing that. Yeah, because I think as an INFJ, uh, when I met uh, my ENFP girlfriend, our futures were completely out of place we wanted uh, we were in different countries we uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were completely mismatched in a sense but I just made everything work to fit so yeah. I kind of just uh, did everything necessary to get us set up so that it would work out and I thought okay what do I need to do in order for us to be together and what sacrifices and changes in my lifestyle do I need to do and then I just made that yeah so that's an interesting thing, like the long distance relationship. I read a statistic once, I don't know if this is true, that like ENFPs are the most likely to be in long distance relationships. Um, and I wonder if like certain, there are certain types that like can't make long distance work more than other types. I think definitely some types will do better with long distance relationships. I think intuitives in general will do a little bit better than sensors. Yeah, um, because uh, sharing sensory I, experiences together. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about the sensors a little bit. Uh, okay. Do you have any sensor you would like to talk about in love? Um, well, you, you can start off, and I'll ping pong off of it. It's fine. Yeah, I could always jump to the ISFJ because I do know a lot of ISFJs uh, and. Uh, uh, close ones or families members and yeah yeah distance family members that have uh, that type and I what I've noticed with them is uh, instead of you know this interactive intuitive thing that we talked about with INFJs what I see a lot more is like uh, does this person fit in with my family or community and do I fit in with their family and community so yeah. what I notice is immediately family becomes a lot more important. I know family is very important in the U.S. already, so it's a bit cultural as well. But also just, you know, uh, will he enjoy having a good conversation with my mom or dad? And uh, how will their families work if they meet? And like really wanting to have a shared sense of our blending culture. Yeah, that is fascinating. Okay, <laughs> it's true. It's true. And it's like, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, of course. Um, but it's so like, for me, that is an enormous stressor, like the like trying to integrate somebody into my family and somebody trying to fit me into their family. If I don't fit in with their family, I don't fit with them. I'd be like, oh, my God, that's hor that horrible. <laughs> I can't think of anything worse for a relationship for me, <laughs> which sounds bad. But it's like, I don't know. I'm more just about like just you and me. Um, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I've heard things like that. So it makes a lot of sense that they would need to have like a shared um, faith too. Yeah. Maybe like if like religion is important in their life, you yeah. need to have somebody who's that same religion because you have to continue with that. And that needs to all be harmonious. Um, yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Their their past needs to be in harmony. S-I-F-E. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think even if it's not, it doesn't have to be that you have to have the same religion or that you have to uh, feel uh, exactly the same identity or lifestyle wise. I know ISFJs that date people that are very different from them in some ways, uh, but it's that you need to feel that you are respected for your identity and lifestyle. And uh, okay. does this person let me uh, 
go to church every Sunday or to uh, if that's important to me or does they do they let me go to football practice uh, three times a week and is that okay with them or is that like a stressor to them or do they feel like that's stupid and what about health and uh, food and diet and what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat how did this person respond to that of course they're ISFJ still so I think ISFJs they still spend a lot of time really trying to bond and to try yeah. to work out differences so I I can see a lot of ISFJ state thing people of opposite religions or uh, mm-hmm. different values because they can still appreciate the challenge of trying to find uh, connection and okay. for understanding yeah and what what do they like when they when they flirt yeah, I think honestly, an underrated personal trait of the ISFJ is that ISFJs they are really uh, funny. Uh, they are really goofy. They really make fun of themselves. People think of them as uptight, uh, stereotypically, uh, mm-hmm. but in reality, they are usually pretty. Uh, they are introverted sensing heroes, you know, flow types. Uh, so for them, it's not something boring. It's not something mundane. It's something funny and something easy and like something you can laugh about. Uh, so they are usually pretty comfortable talking about, uh, uh, yeah, their uh, body or physicality or their uh, stupid things they've said or uh, right. in church or things that didn't fit in or cultural clashes and to just play at that and to be okay with that. Okay. I think, I they, I think they do that when flirting as well. I don't know that much about ISFJ, so that's very interesting uh, for me to hear about them. I. I found that similar thing with I, ISTJs that they they're actually they they're very clever and funny and they love to be funny. I think they really like to play with their NE when they get a chance and especially as they get older and start developing it more. Yeah. Like they they really want to do that and be that with you. Um, ISTJs are underrated comedians for sure uh, I have some they say the most crazy things and I'm like whoa but they that's just their humor and that's just so funny to listen to they can go on really big tirades about something and uh, to them it's like all fun and I'm like wow <laughs> crazy that's crazy yeah that and I love how it's about unexpected <laughs> yeah because like just looking at, at an ISTJ usually they have a look on their face that's more like don't mess with me yeah, I can give a funny anecdote about an ISTJ in love, and uh, uh, yeah, it's somebody in my close family, so I do know a little bit about that story. And it was really he had had a checklist for the ideal partner. He had written down exactly what kind of relationship he wanted, and all the details like how like how many uh, cats they should have, and what kind of cat, and like everything was like really uh, written down as a long list. And he just went through it with. He went through it uh, with his uh, yeah partner then at that time when they met to make sure yeah you check this you go you want this right and <laughs> this is okay this is something you think is good right <laughs> so they, yeah. he really went uh, over that long list and she was like yeah and she was like yeah that sounds good to me and <laughs> she had no <laughs> opinion really <laughs> so what that was, was perfect type, you know uh, eyes of peace so okay. that was. Uh, um, a uh, funny, under, unexpected type. ISTJ, nice of peace. They are a very unexpected pairing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be really uh, that would be really interesting for me to go with that check, through that checklist with somebody. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's something we all should be doing. I don't know. I don't know. My boyfriend had a checklist, but it was only four things that he wanted in a. And it was like a big, you know, big things, not like the life planned out kind of deal. But I, li- I liked that. I, I liked learning about that later. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's good that he went over that with you. That also sounds like he has some uh, good idea about what he wants in life. And he has actually spent some time thinking about himself and his own needs as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you have to be open minded as far as like your, your checklist of like the perfect mate or whatever. But I think it's a good idea to make one, even if you're not going to like stick exactly to it. Cause it's like you have, then you have clear in your head what, what you're actually going for, you know? Yeah. Um, just get it down to, to know what yeah. you want. I think maybe ESTPs are funny when they think, what do you think ESTPs are like in that situation? 
Mm. I think, well, they're similar to ENTPs in that they have like the, the TI and FE, but I think they're, they're, I don't want to say that. I don't want to use that word. Let me, I don't want to use the word socially adept, more socially adept than ENTPs. It's um, true. It's Sorry. true. <laughs> I didn't want to call, I didn't want to call like the other ENTPs out there, like not socially adept, but um, yeah, they're, they're less eccentric so um but i think that estps are typically pretty flirtatious and pretty like they're typically pretty smooth i mean that's like the stereotype of them but it's true like they they know how to flirt and you could say they have game um and it's just because they are able to observe everybody they and they can observe what works like, yeah. okay, I said this, they liked that F-E, and it works, uh, S-E. So it's like, they need practice. They need to, like, go out and practice flirting a lot when they're younger. But then, like, they kind of, like, oh, now once I'm older, like, I got this down. Like, I know what to say. I know what to do. They know how to, like, get people to like them because they watch them. Okay. I'm hearing some objective personality in there. S-E, that works. Ah, uh, yeah. I- Oh, that is so in like all this stuff. Like I watch so much stuff. I read so much stuff. It's just like so integrated in me. I don't even know where it comes from anymore. Like, but yeah, I am a fan. <laughs> I am a fan too. I really enjoy the the fact that they're bringing something new to the table and yeah, helping us think about things in a new perspective. Yeah, yeah. I also think with the ESTPs that uh, they have the same thing INFJs do consciousness wise, because I think consciousness wise, they are also probably very visual and uh, Mm -hmm. like good at like seeing does the other person like me or not? And uh, what do they like about me? And uh, what do they dislike about me? And having that kind of awareness uh, also makes you a bit more smooth in the sense that you know what you can say and you know what you cannot say. Uh, I think you see that even more with them. You know what's cool about um, SE is I think that they can also, like, notice when somebody's noticing them. Yeah. Because, like, I think uh, people who, like, lack SE altogether or who have really low sensing, like, you know, it's like they they don't notice when somebody's, like, checking them out unless it's, like, really obvious or they're also checking the person out. It's like you can miss that entirely. Yeah. And be like, that guy was checking you out. Like, oh, was he? Like... Um, and the ESTPs will see that. I will only see that if it's a person I'm already interested in. (laughs) Otherwise it will go completely over my head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lower SC, but, um, that's just a hypothesis, but I would think it would work that way. I think it works that way. I think, uh, with the ESTPs, what people also forget this with extroverted sensing is it goes both, both ways. While you know that ESTPs, they can, they like to show up from other, in front of other people and to show how strong they are and capable they are. They yeah. also like to see how capable you are and they really like to watch well, how you, what you say and how you do things. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so there's, they really do observe you a lot and give you a lot of attention. I think if you were looking for attention from a partner, I think an ESTP or ESP is an underrated choice. Mm-hmm. A person who will listen to you, see you and pay attention to your life and what you're doing and your mannerisms, your feelings, like they, they really bribe off you mm-hmm. very well. Yeah, I did find um, ESFPs to be very attentive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why that sounds like it's not like the best thing. It's, yeah, it was great. They're super attentive. <laughs> like anything um, that I needed in a relationship with an ESFP, they were happy to like try and help me like um, whatever I was going through or like, you know, like physical, practical things or whatever, like super happy to try to help out. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, ESFPs, I think they, they want to, just make their partner happy. But my, my relationships that I've had with ESFPs were always like very centered around like doing lots of, lots of doing. And this was when I was younger. So it was, it, it wasn't really, it was always like being out and engaging in our common interests. I think that was something that was like really important to have in that relationship. Like we have a common hobby, like, okay, we're both into fitness and we like football. Okay. So common, common things. And like, we're always doing those things. Um, so I don't really know what how their relationship work 
relationships work with other types. But that's what I've gleaned from from ESFPs. I feel we're not going to have the time to talk about every single personality type, but there's one last type I would like to round off with, and that's the INFP personality type. It's oh, yeah, uh, the personality course. type that watches my channel the most already. And oh, wow. yeah, I really have so many INFP supporters uh, that are, yeah, you're so amazing in the comment field. So I really want to end this with uh, talking about them as well. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> I start. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anything. No. Uh, INFPs, I think uh, they are interesting because I think they fantasize uh, probably the most about uh, love and uh, about uh, dating. And uh, I think they are one of the types that yeah really think the most about like uh, what kind of a partner would they like and. Uh, what would they like about that person and what would their life look together and what kind of uh, an exchange would they have with each other and uh, really they go really deeply into this but like you kind of touched upon in the beginning of the video they are people that struggle with taking initiative in real uh, in the real world like actually showing what your feelings are to another person is very hard to an INFP mm -hmm. uh, but even though you have so many it's like can I kiss this person can I uh, go and talk to this person and uh, uh, talk to them about my feelings and start a relationship with this person in the real world. Do you think that INFPs um, could possibly end up the most disappointed in love? I, I have heard statistics that suggest INFJs and INFPs are some of the least uh, satisfied oh. in relationships. Oh, that's uh, which can be a side effect of struggling to speak up about your needs and feelings to another person. Okay. And it can lead to that uh, negative side effect of deciding, oh, I, I'm not meant for dating because I can't uh, mm -hmm. uh, trust another person to know my feelings and needs and to know what I'm feeling. Because I think when you're an INFJ or an INFP, you assume that other people can read your mind and that other people know what you feel just like you tend to know how they feel and like you tend to uh, pay attention to their feelings. Yeah. But it's, it's very difficult. It requires a lot of vulnerability. And on the part of both people, right? Yeah. 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 I think with flirting, though, I've noticed that INFPs on a more light note, uh, they do leave a lot of hints. They <laughs> constantly. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, when you are aware and attentive to it, it's pretty obvious. Like they uh, will uh, bring up ideas of things you could do together mm -hmm. that are a little bit like, what? Why would you want to do this? Or <laughs> like uh, uh, they, they really make you think and they, they don't spell things out for you. They really want you, to, they really want to test your ability to figure them out. Yeah. Can you understand me? Like a specific example, like a, a specific, I don't know, experience I had with um, an INFP. And he was dropping tons of hints, but I still, like, I didn't know about typology at that point. So I wanted to see, like, how long can I make him go before he initiates? Hmm. And then how it all it fizzled out because... <laughs> I'm oh, just no. playing this stupid game of like, hmm, you know, you like me and I like you. Let's see how long you can take it. <laughs> but he was dropping hints like all over the place. Like, and I was just like, no, I'm not going to do this. That, that's dumb. <laughs> I'm seeing the skeleton on a bench uh, mo uh, meme now in my head. Yeah, yeah, that was so dumb. <laughs> but yeah, it is like... They're not going to spell it out for you, but if you pay any attention at all, it's quite clear. <laughs> yeah, and if you are willing to play along with the Nine of Peace fantasy, you can have some really amazing conversations. Like if you really go on with their hints and really give hints back and really have that interchange, because I think that can really get the Nine of P really excited. Like if you start like really uh, throwing out feelings and ideas and uh, like things you could do together and really start like building that, they can really go big in their head <laughs> about the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah, that's very sweet. It is. 
So uh, I want to end with a question for you more about your app. Uh, okay. And I was more, I was more uh, curious, like what made you want to build this app in the first place? Oh, okay. Um, it's a complicated question because I feel like I'm supposed to give like the type of answer where it's like, uh, I just, I felt like, like really strongly about this and this is my passion and I want to help other people and stuff, but it's really like, I'm really into MBTI and I wanted to build an app. I've always, I've wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was like 20, but I didn't know like where specifically to channel that. It's just like, oh, someday I want to have a business. Um, and it just all kind of came together perfectly like that. I just enjoy building it. That's why I built it, because I just like building it. I like creating a system. And mm -hmm. I think it's useful. I built it because people want it. Like, it's just clear that people are looking for this. And a year ago, there was really nothing available. And I saw the hole in the market. And I said, well, I'll build it. I'm not really doing anything so so I just yeah that's the reason and I know that's not very like uh maybe that's not a good reason I don't know it doesn't really matter but I built it because people wanted it and I wanted to build it you built it because you were really curious and because you're a nerd <laughs> and because uh, <laughs> yeah basically you, you really enjoyed thinking how do I, how would I do this and how yeah. would it end up I love building businesses. Like this isn't going to be like the only one that I build. Like I, my goal is like, this is how I want to spend my life. Um, I enjoy thinking about like, okay, if I were to create this, like how would that work? Like what are all the components that would need to come together? Let's make a business plan. And that sounds very like, I don't know, fun to me. To do. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I've uh, been blogging since 2007, developing websites and I, it's been such an amazing creative outlet and uh, the fact that uh, MBTI is so interesting and the potential of it uh, has really like made me uh, a lot more nerdy than I am even I'm, even about the statistics, the numbers, the coding, the uh, plugins you need, how they should be set up, how you put all the components together. I love even it. spending hours of it like uh, a part I hate it but I really enjoy like seeing how it will work and uh, how people will respond to it and yeah it's just amazing yeah this is me like I want to learn to code now like um this summer I'm gonna look into like how I can take classes because I I love it like I've done like some rudimentary coding and I'm like this is this is where it's at <laughs> this is so it's, fun because it's I'm almost as important as learning Chinese like uh, like learning a language like to in the future if you know coding you know power yeah exactly. basically yeah <laughs> no coding anywhere. power wow that's beautiful <laughs> yeah it's a very hey, enneagram eight thing to say actually <laughs> anyways um, uh, I want to say uh, thank you so much for joining me in this chat and. Uh, to all you viewers uh, watching, I want you all to go check out Kate's app at www.typematch.com, typematchapp.com. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, honestly, I don't care if you're not looking for anyone right now, just download the app or sign up for the newsletter and get it on iOS as soon as it's available. Uh, Honestly, I feel there is a cost to this that is also really important because I, I've seen the numbers and there are so many people out there that feel lonely today yeah. in today's society. Uh, and I think it's because we're not connecting with people on the right things. We're not connecting with people on things that matter to us and we're not letting people be significant to us. So we're not having real conversations with people. And yeah. this app might be just the right tool for that. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. All the shout outs. That's amazing. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. I'm going to end this uh, video on a quick question. And that's just, uh, are we afraid to let people mean something? Do we let the uh, fears and insecurities stop us from connecting with other people? And uh, yeah, watching all this, uh, what personality type you are you? And what are you like when you have a crush for a person? What do you do? Feel free to add it in the comments down below.
thanks again for joining and see you in the next video. <laughs> okay.